Good morning. I'd like to call the West Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency's February 21st meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'd like to ask Director Turner to please lead us in the pledge. All right, thank you. And let's get underway. Um, our first item, our first action is the approval of the agenda. And I move that we approve the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Turner. I'll second that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, that passes unanimously. Our next item is public comment on matters not on the agenda. I, we have no um, request to speak. Are there any members of the public here who would like to speak? All right, that brings us to the approval of the January 17th, 2018, or I think it's 2019 minute meeting minutes. Um, I move that we uh, approve the minutes. I'll second that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And I should mention that our, our colleague who is the chair is um, not available to be here. Mr. Ramos was not available to join us today. Um, although he was able to call into our closed session, and I will ask that we have a report out on that closed session. Uh, the board did meet in closed session uh, to confer with legal counsel on two matters. Uh, the first matter was Baxter versus the West Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency, and no action was taken, but it was reported that that case has settled. The second item was uh, conferring with legal counsel regarding anticipated litigation, and no action was taken on that matter. Thank you. And that brings us to our review of our monthly and year-to-date revenue and expenses. Good morning. Good morning, members of the board. I'll be reporting out on the revenue and expenses for the month of December of 2018. Um, in 870, the beginning balance was approximately 6.5 million. Our revenue was about $4,000. Expenses were 21,000. The ending cash position for fund 870 was 6.5 million. For fund 871, the beginning balance was negative 22.1 million. Uh, we received about 15.4 million from state that came from adjustment to quarter 15 through 25 and true ups from quarter 28 through quarter 29. Expenses were 859,000 and the ending cash position for 871 was negative 7.6 million. Um, along with our 35 million advanced state funding, the combined cash position for 870 871 was 18.8 million. That concludes my summary. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, questions? No, I don't. <coughs> thank you so much. Right, thank you. All right, and that brings us to our consent agenda. We have two <coughs> items on consent. Would you like to pull any off? Have any questions? All right. Looking for a motion to approve consent. Uh, I'll move to uh, approve consent. And I'll second that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right, and that passes unanimously. That brings us to our Wasafka project updates. Hello again. Hi. <laughs> so earlier I summarized on the agency's cash position for December of 2018. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to brief the board on the cash position as of February 13, 2019. And so, um, as of February 13, 2019, the agency's ca combined cash position was approximately 15.2 million. Wasafka received the first installment of the 2018-19 flood assessment in the amount of $2,361,529, a 3.8 percent increase over the last year's first installment. O&M distributions for the first installment total $366,509. Debt services payments totaling $1.64 million were transferred from Fund 870 to the bond debt services funds. The payments were accrued to August 31st, 2018. The second Measure V contribution from the city for $2 million accrued to Fund 871 on January 17th of this year. In aggregate, the transaction resulted in approximately $2 million increase in the agency's cash position from January. Staff and DWR have cheered up costs through December 2018. A transfer from Fund 257 to Fund 871 will follow receipt 
of DWR's letter accepting the cost and state cost share amount. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And just to add to that, I think the, what we're expecting um, to be able to transfer from the state's holding fund is about, six, about an additional $6 million. Okay. So. Thanks. Uh, a little bit on the Southport project. Uh, staff's been um, wrapping up more final accounting packages. I think four um, were submitted over the last month uh, to DWR, um, including the last, <coughs> excuse me, last of the condemnation packages. Um, there is uh, just shy of about 10 packages left um, to wrap up all of the, the real estate transactions. And then also the same staff um, submitted and received payment uh, of a little over half a million dollars um, from the site cleanup account program for the time oil remediation. Uh, there's a second invoice uh, that's in with the state now for reimbursement, um, which totals just shy of about $650,000. I think the overall grant is about $784,000. So there's still uh, room under the grant um, to cover costs such as installation of the ground monitoring well and the additional reporting and then final closeout. Um, so staff has done a great job um, and it, a little bit tedious and difficult job uh, getting all that information over to the state, getting it approved, and then getting the, the reimbursement. So it's uh, looking to pay for a significant portion of the costs for the time old remediation. So. I'll commend you on that work. Yeah, Thank kudos you. to yeah, staff for pulling that one off. Um, the uh, Southport project, I mean, there's not, obviously there's not much going out with the levy pieces. There's a, um, some bulleted items uh, in the report um, on some of the activities that are going on, which primarily consist of project closeout documentation. But, um, but phase three, our restoration uh, piece, um, staff released um, the 100% bid package uh, last week on February 14th. Um, so it's now out, now out for public review, well, for bid. And uh, there's a mandatory walkthrough that's been scheduled for February 28th. Um, I think the, there's gonna be a short presentation here or discussion and then they'll be uh, moving out in the field to take a look at the site and site conditions. Um, like I said, it's mandatory in order for them to be able to bid on the project. Okay. Uh, under the federal project, so we at the board already took an action uh, to, to approve entering into a design agreement in substantially as to the form that was presented um, at a previous meeting. Um, just as an update to that, uh, there's the amount of the design agreement, total design. Um, I think what was presented to the board was a total design uh, under the agreement of $4 million. Uh, that agreement's now 5.16. It's a $4 million federal share. And then um, the remaining, the balance of it is the non-federal share. So that's really the only change um, at this point. I don't think it's material. Um, and I think the existing uh, authorization that the board gave is sufficient for us to execute it. Uh, once it has passed through the Central Valley Flood Protection Board review and approval, which is scheduled for March, okay. it's delayed by uh, one month. We're anticipating it going uh, this week, but um, it's going to be going in March instead, which it should not um, affect the schedule. Uh, once the board takes action, then um, we can circulate, <coughs> excuse me, for signatures, and then the uh, core will be the last signatory on the, on the design agreement. The other thing that this uh, board staff is taking in March is a local design agreement, um, and that would is will be uh, executed between uh, the board and our board and the Central Valley Flood Protection Board. So we'll be, we'll be bringing a companion item to the board next month for consideration on entering into that local design agreement. Um, and that sets up the relationship between WSAFCA and the state in how we are sharing uh, costs related to the federal project. Uh, we anticipate that being a 70-30 cost share, 70% state, 30% um, with SAFCA, that's what's circulating through the draft uh, right now. I don't anticipate that changing. And then just as a, uh, an update, the construction funding agreement amendment number four was finally executed. This is something that the board took an action on a while ago. And um, that does now have elements in that 
uh, agreement that allows the state to participate financially and other resources in the design of the next increment for the federal project. So once all these, the design agreement with the Corps is, is finalized and the local design agreement with the state is finalized, um, they'll have a couple of different vehicles to provide resources to help fund that effort. So. And then I'd like to report out on a uh, recent trip to D.C. Um, last week. Uh, I and uh, Mayor Cabaldon uh, had a number of meetings with uh, folks back in D.C. Um, I'm going to go down the list of the folks that we met with. Uh, we met with the office of um, Senator Harris, uh, clerks from the House Energy and Water Appropriations Subcommittee. Uh, we met with... Um, Chief at the Office of, Office of Management and Budget, OMB. Uh, we met with the Congresswoman, Doris Matsui herself. Uh, we also met with the Deputy ASA, uh, Brad, excuse me, um, Ryan Fisher. Uh, we also met with Brad Schwichtenberg at uh, Army Corps Headquarters. He's the re head of the Regional Integration Team for the South Pacific Division. And then we also met with a uh, representative or clerk in the Senate Energy and Water Appropriations Subcommittee. Um, good news is everybody knows who we are. There's not a whole lot of surprises uh, when we're visiting them. They're not learning things uh, new. It's a re kind of a refresher and a reminder. Um, but they continue, I would say, everybody really continues to be impressed with the work that WSAFCA is carrying out in advance of um, full federal participation. Um, we received lots of encouragement to keep up the good work. It can only uh, pay dividends, if you will, um, towards receiving additional federal funds and also helping us to keep on schedule and reduce ultimately, you know, future costs. All, all good news. Um, a little bit surprising, I would say, with the Office of Management Budget is our BCR didn't come up at all. Uh, not one question. Um, and the meeting primarily focused with uh, or around the 1043 pilot program, uh, which is a program that has had very little participation. It was um, a program whereby the Corps provides funding to a non-federal sponsor to carry out the design and construction of a project, an authorized project. There's been only one project across the nation that has uh, entered into a uh, PPA or a construction funding agreement uh, since 2014. Um, there's been a lot of push back in uh, with the administration on having some successful programs um, or projects under this program. Uh, our name has come up as a potential candidate that can um, lead work. And so our conversation with OMB pretty much was focused on that. Um, and I think the takeaway um, by them is that we, in fact, are a very good candidate for such a program, and we can deliver uh, large and complex uh, flood control projects. There are no guidelines out for this program. Um, there is a deadline of June of 2019 for projects under this program to commence. Um, there is not a, an opinion out there of what commence means. Um, and, and discussions range from entering into an agreement to completing discussion, um, excuse me, completing um, construction. So it remains to be seen uh, whether or not there's going, there's going to be some legislative uh, fixes, if you will, to extend some of these deadlines in order for us to even be able to participate. And we certainly don't want we want to be able to have as much flexibility or as many options in how we move our project forward. And this may be one of them. And if it can get us to a new start construction, mm -hmm. that may be a, a good reason to, to participate in that program. Um, but more, more to report on that as uh, we learn more information. There was a <clears throat> comment period that closed on February 12th um, to provide comments to the Corps on general guidelines um, related to Word of 2014 and Word of 2018. Uh, staff sent a letter on behalf of the Board on some of um, our concerns or <coughs> things that we would like to see in guidelines for um, 
the 1043 program, and I neglected to include a copy of that with the monthly report, so I'll make sure to send that out to the board for your information. Um, there should be a second round of comments. Presuming that they do issue guidelines for the 1043 program, we'll have a second round of, or a, there'll be a second round of comments specific to that program. And uh, depending on what those guidelines read, I would anticipate um, perhaps providing more comments at a later date. And in any event, we'll make sure to keep the board updated as we move forward. Thank you. Um, Mayor Cabaldon last night at, at City Council reported out um, on the set of meetings and uh, seemed very optimistic. He also mentioned that the, the kind of funding environment has possibly, in terms of um, earmarking, or earmarking may return, and that if that were the case with a, with a new nomenclature, I can't remember, it was like person, personal um, projects or something for, for the con congressmen and women, um, we, we would, in that case, be in really good really good position given Congresswoman Mats Matsui's support and encouragement and of this project. So not that that's happened yet, but right. uh, we kind of have to be ready for every possibility right now. Yeah, and I think to that point, we're the last project in the Congresswoman's district to receive, yet to receive construction mm -hmm. funding. And so there's nobody that we're competing with, if you will, for um, such an, an earmark or, or mm -hmm. other funding mechanism. So yeah, all of these things are in play right now, and we certainly want to take advantage of uh, one or as many as we can to keep our project moving forward. So. And then we have the cap to cap um, program coming up and pretty soon, so. Yeah, and so uh, in, in terms of future trips to DC, um, I'll be attending the National Waterways Conference oh, good. Uh, Legislative Summit, which is scheduled uh, beginning first week of March. Okay. Um, so I'll be back there for that. And then I'm also planning to attend the cap to cap trip for the flood team, um, which I believe you are a member of. Yes. I believe um, Councilwoman Guerrero, too, has joined the flood committee, I believe. Or okay. she's added, going to be adding to that. And I believe um, Director Ramos. I think he may still be on the fence, but okay. uh, it, okay. it's an option and for him as well. If I get a hall pass, I'll Okay. I'll All right. All right. We'll be back there in force. Greg, Greg oh, excuse me, are you done? Yeah. Okay, Greg, did you meet with our um, lobbyists as, as well, or was it just you and Christopher meeting one-on-one -on -one with the officials? No, you we, we were with both um, the cities and with Safeco's lobbyists, Hall and Knight, as well as our additional lobbyist, Mike, Mike Strawn, yeah, for all of the visits. Good. So, yeah. Sounds like it was productive and... Yeah, and there was not one reschedule or delay or, or cancellation. We met with everybody as, as scheduled, so I think it, it really went off without a hitch. It was um, quite good. Great. Yeah, good. And I th think that's about what I had to update. If there's any other questions on the program update, be happy to answer. Any questions? No. Okay. Um, any comments? No. General. All right. Um, we will adjourn today's meeting and see you next month. <laughs>